Well, what's up, Guardians? Peace and Grease here. And today I want to talk a little bit about my concerns regarding the final shape. A while back, Bungie dropped a trailer. And I've spent some, quite a while looking at that trailer. And, well, as you can imagine, I have some very serious concerns. Now, let me apologize right off the rip here and tell you that I literally just got out of the hospital with pneumonia. So if you hear me coughing or clearing my throat, well, that's just kind of the nature of the beast. Now, for all of you Bungie apologists and Destiny fanboys and fangirls out there, I have supported Bungie my entire life, literally. As a little kid playing Halo, all through Destiny 1 and now through Destiny 2. So when I say I wish nothing but the utmost of success for all of Bungie's endeavors, I genuinely mean it. Furthermore, when I say that I hope Destiny goes on to another 40 plus years, I also genuinely mean it. My concerns are coming from a place of caring about the game. Not as a hater, but somebody that has grown up with these games and adores them. And I want to see Bungie do better. I want Bungie to reach that success. But as much as we want it for them, they have to do it themselves. Now, prior to Destiny 2's completion and subsequent launch, they, Bungie took to social media and asked the community what they would prefer, taking all of the weapons and armor that we had to pay or grind for in Destiny 1 and carry them forward into the next game or start over again. My response to Bungie on Twitter was simple. Either is fine, but, in all caps, if we, the player, start over, you, the developer, starts over. Well, sadly, hour one... Minute one, second one of Destiny 2's launch. The copy-paste extravaganza that is Destiny 2 commenced and it has not stopped to this very day. In fact, even with the final shape trailer, they're continuing that. Just look at the Gallarhorn as an example. This launched early on in Destiny 1's life cycle. And then Bungie re reintroduced it a second time in Destiny 1 again. And then of course they re, re, reintroduced it a third time in Destiny 2. And for the final shape, they're doing the same exact thing with the Kavastoth. It was introduced as a white weapon earlier on in Destiny 1's life cycle. Then of course they made it an exotic and now they want to re, re, reintroduce the Kavastoth a third time in Destiny 2. And of course the Red Death as well. The fact of the matter is that this type of stuff doesn't get me excited. This copy-paste stuff doesn't get me hyped. In fact, it has the adverse effect of pissing me off. Because a percentage of my money when I buy these expansions goes towards those weapons and armor. Or those raids that I've already done. And nobody likes feeling like they're paying for the same things over and over and over again. Now, I always have some knucklehead out there that wants to tell me that you're not actually paying for these things. Chief, just because somebody says that something is free doesn't mean that it actually is. I can tell you that I'm selling a set of floor masks for $10,000 and if you buy them, you get the car for free. But are you actually getting the car for free, sport? No. This is an old sales strategy that has been around since before I've even been born. And developers absolutely love it. You slap a picture of the product up on the screen and you say, pay 180 bucks for this and you get these items for free. But here's the rub. If you don't buy the item, do you get the things for free? No. So then how do you get all of those items for free? You have to buy that thing then it's no longer free, is it? That's the rub. So, unfortunately, just because somebody says something is free doesn't mean that it is. And while I'm certainly not sitting here saying that all of my money goes towards paying for that reused copy-paste raid or those copy-paste supers or subclasses or those copy-paste exotics or weapons or armor, I am saying that a small percentage of it does. And that adds up over time. When I'm paying for the Gallarhorn three times, or I'm paying for the Kavastop three times, or I'm paying for these exotics, weapons and armor twice, 
In fact, if you look at Destiny 2's exotic list, you'll find a good bulk of it is from copy-paste Destiny 1. You'll find that strikes and crucible maps and raids, all of these kinds of things are just copy-paste. Ask yourself a question. How often do we have to fight the same bosses? All the time. If you look at, for example, the final boss room in the Vex Calibur exotic quest, that was just a strike from Destiny 1. So the reusing of these assets and the copy-paste nature of them doesn't excite me or doesn't get me hyped. It just pisses me off and leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Next up, location. Bungie are masters of locations. When you think of all of the different locations we've had in Destiny 2, there are some truly stunning locations on display. This is something that Bungie is an absolute master at. 10 out of 10 times, they knock it out of the park when it comes to location. And I have zero doubt that the final shapes location is going to be breathtaking. But that in and of itself isn't enough to get me excited or hyped. So what else do we have? Well, let's talk story. Story is another facet that's very important to me personally. And to be polite as possible, Final Shapes, excuse me, last Lightfall's campaign story was lackluster to say the least. In fact, I asked my buddy the other day, I said, uh, why did we go to Niamuna? And he said, we had to fight the witness. And I said, no, we never fought the witness. And he went, that's right, we had to fight Cabal. I was like, that's right, we had to fight Callus. Again. I don't think there's any more damning evidence that your story was badly done when people can't even remember what it was about. Yeah. Now, we haven't heard any kind of information about the story with the final shape, but... While I would love to sit here and say that, you know what, I hope that Bungie's going to get it right this time. Historically, Bungie has shown us that they fail more than they succeed. There's really only been two good updates with Destiny 2, Forsaken and the Witch Queen. Even losing our boy Cade 6 in Forsaken, still one of my favorite expansions to date. Second place is the Witch Queen. All other expansions our bottom tier, awful writing in regards to story. So historically, Bungie fails more than they succeed. So I will apologize if I don't just give you blind faith any longer on this. Now, we get into the next topic. Some of you may remember, back with Lightfall, I made a video about the Strand Titan Super and how it's copy-paste. And I showed you all the ways that it was copy-paste and said how concerned I was about it. Bungie's response was simple. And to boil it down, they basically said, no, it's not. Yeah, that's essentially what they said. Of course, once we got hands-on with the Strand Titan Super, we found out that, yes, as a matter of fact, it is copy-paste. There was nothing new to see here. But you may be wondering, Peace, exactly why are we talking about Lightfall and the Strand Titan Super? Well, because sadly we have to talk about the next Titan Super with the final shape. That's right, Bungie has done it again. They have learned, at least from the outside looking in, nothing. They bragged about the fact that you could guard with part of the Titan new, air quote, Super. But correct me if I'm wrong, fam. Doesn't the Titan Super already have the ability to block with the subclass, specifically the Void? Yes, they do. That's strike one, Bungie. You can throw a projectile, in this case an axe. Aren't there already several Supers for the Titan that allow us to throw projectiles? Yes, there are. In fact, one of them is the copy-paste Strand Titan Super. Strike two, Bungie. And then probably the most offensive thing is the axe itself and you're getting two strikes for this one Bungie because of how disrespectful and offensive it is if you weren't around for the final expansion for Destiny 1 the Rise of Iron you may not be privy to this information so let me explain it 
similar to a Hive Knight sword in Destiny 2, and it was in Destiny 1 as well, if you kill a Hive Knight, they drop a sword. You can pick up said sword and use it until you run out of ammo. That's exactly how the axe worked in Destiny 1's Rise of Iron. You would pick up the axe and you could use the axe until you ran out of ammo. All that Bungie has done here is taken that axe and they are now calling it a, quote, Titan Super. Because of how dishonest, yes, you're getting strikes three and four for that, Bungie. And this really leads me to have to beg the question, are you even trying anymore? All these years I've supported you. All these years I've bought every expansion for every game. But people don't give you money unless they see value in your product. And I gotta be honest, Bungie, I'm not seeing the value in your product at this point. Now, if you really want my true opinion, I personally think that Bungie has a fear of innovating because they have a fear of failing. Failure can be your best teacher if you let it. Take, for example, mods. Bungie got it from Warframe. Take, for example, fishing. Bungie got it from Warframe. Take, for example, Guardian Rank. Bungie got it from Warframe. But none of those lessons were learned by you, Bungie. They were learned by the developer that did it, DE, but not you. Case in point, the Guardian Rank, or Mastery Rank as it's known, in Warframe. The developer knew people were not engaging with this system because people didn't find value in it. The developer DE had to go back and completely renovate the mastery rank system. It had to make it worthwhile and beneficial to the player to actually engage with that mechanic. And it worked. It, it worked. They did. And it's a very, very much better system now than it was. But Bungie, you didn't have to learn those lessons. And you expect me to waste my time on busy filler work? just to get a bigger number above my character's head with no real payoff? I'm sorry, you're sorely mistaken. I'm not going to. I don't care about that number above my character's head. I don't give a damn. And you expect me to reset it every single season? Again, to no real benefit? No thank you, Bungie. I'm good. You need to stop imita imitating and start innovating. Now make no mistake, I am not trying to call Bungie out here. Every developer copies or borrows different types of ideas from other developers. But Bungie, why didn't you use your community? Why didn't you take to social media and ask the Destiny community what's a unique or interesting idea you would like to see for a super? You would have gotten hundreds of unique, original ideas that no one's ever seen before. But you didn't. You're just going through the motions. You're not actually innovating. It doesn't appear as if you're trying. Well, bad news for you is I have not bought the final shape, nor am I going to, until I see some real honest effort on your part. We've given you long enough now, at this point, that it is not unrealistic to expect some improvements. But so far, we're not getting those improvements. So, let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Am I wrong? Or am I right? And until next time, peace out.